This segment is an introduction to the equations that can be used to calculate the Hubble constant. Now our starting point is the basic diagram with which you are familiar and we remind ourselves that astronomers and cosmologists can calculate the distance that light traveled and we also know the wavelength of that light when it's observed on Earth and the observed redshift of that light from the redshift that would have been expected from light emitted from a similar source if there was no redshift. So the things that are known are the distance light traveled, the observed redshift, the wavelength of the light observed, and the initial wavelength that the light emitted from such an object would have had if there had been no redshift. So some physicists and cosmologists use a Doppler redshift formula to calculate the Hubble constant and here's how it works. This is a standard non-relativistic Doppler redshift formula. You take the redshift that equals the velocity over the speed of light so you can then calculate the velocity divide the velocity by the distance that light traveled gives you a value for h. And I'll just note in passing that all of the formulas that I'm going to be talking about are the non-relativistic formulas because for most of the calculations of the Hubble constant non-relativistic formulas give a very close approximation of the accurate number. It's close enough to be used for all necessary purposes. There will be a segment on relativistic formulas later on in the series. Just note in passing that this is another version of the Doppler redshift formula that can be derived from that. It's the ratio of the final observed wavelength over the initial wavelength and it equals that, 1 plus V over C. Now, most physicists and cosmologists use a cosmologic redshift formula to calculate the Hubble constant, and here's how it works. The observed redshift of light is caused by and directly proportionate to the stretching of light during travel. So the ratio of the final wavelength over the initial wavelength equals this, A now over A then, where A is something called the scale factor. And from that, the value of H can be derived. Now one of the things that we're going to see is that a simplified version of the cosmologic redshift formula where compounding is not taken into account has an interim step that looks like this. 1 plus V of the phantom object over C. And then from that, the V of the phantom object can be solved and dividing by the, the distance that light traveled gives a value for H. So I'll just note in passing that this is where a whole bunch of confusion arises because this form of the cosmologic redshift formula looks like a Doppler redshift. But strictly speaking, it's the non-compounding version of the cosmologic redshift formula that's being used. The third formula is a formula we're going to build from first principles and it looks like this. The final wavelength equals the initial wavelength times 1 plus V1 over C times dn over d1. 
Now this looks like a Doppler redshift, and it is. And this looks like a cosmologic redshift, and it also is. So this is a formula that can be built from first principles of physics and cosmology. And then that formula can be solved to find the value for H. I'll be able to say more about these three equations in a moment after you've seen the video segment entitled First Principles, which describes the expansion of space and relates it to the first principles of physics that are relevant in constructing or understanding these equations. For most viewers, the video to watch is entitled First Principles, but for those viewers who are physicists or cosmologists who work in the area of the Hubble constant and general relativity and the Friedman equation, instead there are two shorter videos regarding the first principles for you.